We are back. Journey to 600. Today we're going to talk about shoulder pathology part one. So we're going to break it down into two videos. And then again, breaking it down by what type of diagnosis we're going to talk about. It's split into four categories. One, muscle power deficit. Two, radiating pain. Three, mobility deficit. And four, movement coordination impairment. So that kind of just groups these diagnoses together based on the type of tissue that is impaired or based on the type of symptoms that might present. So in part one, we'll go over muscle power deficit and radiating pain. But then again, looking at how we break it down, we have these gold, silver, and bronze topics. Score Builders breaks down topics based on these, what they call gold, silver, and bronze. So gold is what is highly seen on boards, silver a little bit less than that, and bronze a little bit less than that. And then for like things like thoracic outlet and labral tear, those are not really grouped as bronze. It's kind of, I guess, lower than bronze, but I felt like we should include them and talk about them today or in the next part. So what is a muscle power deficit? That is when you have a dysfunction with a contractile structure and it will lead to weakness and pathomechanics due to overuse or trauma. So biceps, muscle, rotator cuff muscles, like the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and the subscapularis. Starting off, biceps tendon. Biceps tendon pathology is mycotrauma to the biceps tendon, which can begin as an acute inflammatory disorder, such as the tendonitis, but can lead to degenerative changes such as tendinosis. Or you could also have a rupture of the proximal biceps tendon, typically occurs at the long head of the biceps. This can also happen due to trauma such as falling on an outstretched hand. Presentation will be pain along the anterior shoulder, bicepital groove area, with potential referral to that elbow. It's going to be tender to palpate on the proximal biceps tendon. There's going to be weakness and pain with the biceps manual muscle testing they the patient might report a pop with the injury or you might see a popeye deformity where the biceps has rolled up there might be ecchymosis and swelling if there's a tear present special tests to determine if it was biceps tendon would be speeds and yergesons for medical management they would be getting an x-ray to examine bony morphology arthritic changes and bone spurs, or they might take NSAIDs or get a cortisone injection. For surgery, if there is a rupture, they might have to do a tenodesis, which is re-anchoring the tendon back, or do a bicep tenotomy, which is just to cut the tendon. Rotator cuff tendon mechanism of injury is falling on an outstretched hand, overhead throwing associated with other injuries, or it could be a degenerative tear due to subacromial impingement. The presentation for rotator cuff tendon pathology is referred pain along the lateral deltoid or arm, tender to palpate at the greater or lesser tubercle and bicepital groove, so all those attachment sites of the different muscles of the rotator cuff, weakness in the muscles that are affected, and then the special tests are also broken down by muscles. So supraspinatus will be the drop arm and empty can test, and for Infraspinatus and teres minor would be the ER lag sign and horn blowers. The subscapularis would be the lift off and belly press. Surgery is going to be dependent on the size of the tear based on those MRI results, but they could have subacromial decompression if that was the cause, rotator cuff repair, or if it's really bad, they might have to reverse total shoulder. For impingement, this is typically due to some kind of anatomy of the shoulder joint. They present with pain at the anterior and lateral shoulder, or you could also have some posterior impingement, so the posterior side of the shoulder would be hurting. Weakness in the rotator cuff muscles and scapular muscles. Altered scapulohumeral rhythm. The special tests you're looking at, though, are Hawkins-Kennedy near and painful arc. Surgical intervention for impingement would be subacromial decompression. Next category is radiating pain. So thoracic outlet syndrome is fall, falls under radiating pain, and basically that's just any kind of nerve-related pain. So thoracic outlet syndrome is characterized by numbness and paresthesia of the arm and hand, coldness of the hand, or clumsiness with the use of the hand, 
arm numbness, and heaviness feeling. This is often due to bony or soft tissue anomalies, muscle spasm, or postural abnormalities. The symptoms can increase with overhead activities, posture impairments such as forward head, depressed shoulders, elevated first rib. It would lead to weakness and decreased sensation in the C8 to T1 or C5 through 7 distributions, just depending on where that impingement is. The site of symptoms depends on what nerve is compressed. But the main thing is that the myotomes, dermatomes, and reflexes are normal because the true nerve roots are intact, but they're compressed somewhere after that nerve root, leading to weakness and decreased sensation. Special tests are the acid maneuver, Allen test, Ruse test, and hyperabduction test. Medical intervention, x-rays to assess for bony morphology and or degenerative changes. MRI to identify soft tissue abnormalities or nerve root pathology for differential diagnosis. And then um, you would also possibly get some nerve conduction or EMG studies to assess for the nerve pathology. Thoracic outlet syndrome, there's three possible areas of entrapment. The Costco clavicular space, which is due to elevated rib or depressed clavicle. Interscaling triangle, is due to tightness or hypertrophy of the scalenes. And then last is intrapectoral space, so tightness of the pec minor, um, leading to some entrapment of the nerve. Practice question. A patient reports referred pain over the lateral deltoid as well as pain with overhead activities. They have a positive empty can and weakness in the shoulder. Which of the following diagnosis is most likely? A, rotator cuff injury. B, biceps tendon injury. C, shoulder impingement, D, thoracic outlet syndrome. I'll give you a moment to answer. Please pause if you're not ready to review. So, this is a differential diagnosis question. We are told that a patient has pain over their lateral deltoid as well as pain with overhead activities. So pain with over overhead activities, that can be a lot of shoulder issues, but I think the thing that stands out the most is a positive empty can. Weakness in the shoulder kind of goes with any shoulder pathology because the muscles will kind of get weak over time. But empty can is for a supraspinatus rotator cuff tear. So A is the best answer, but let's go through the rest. So biceps tendon injury, the pain is going to be more of an anterior shoulder near the bicepital groove. The special test would be Speeds and Jurgensen's. Shoulder impingement, they could have pain over their lateral shoulder. They would also have weakness, but empty can is not a shoulder impingement test. Shoulder impingement Special tests are Hawkins-Kennedy, near, and painful arc. And then lastly, thoracic outlet syndrome. It's probably the least one that fits in this area just because the patient would report like numbness and tingling, and none of that is reported in this case scenario. But thinking about this type of question, um, you can kind of refer to this chart of differential diagnosis because the biggest things are where's the area of pain and what are the special tests. You can, in addition, confirm those findings with, are they tearing to palpate anywhere? Do they have weakness anywhere? Or other clinical signs that are very unique to that injury. So for like the biceps tendon, if it ruptured, they would have a Popeye deformity. That's very characteristic of a biceps tendon rupture. Um, they're going to have anterior pain, but the rotator cuff is going to be more lateral pain. Impingement can be pain in various parts of the shoulder, but they are also going to have some kind of altered scapulohumeral rhythm, the way the shoulder works together. Thoracic outlet is going to be the one that primarily has that numbness and tingling because of what type of injury it is. Um, but again, just kind of also picking out those special tests that kind of just those special tests are just a lot of words, but those are going to be very characteristic to indicate what type of diagnosis it is. Thanks so much for watching. 
Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. See you next time on your journey to 600.